My name is Galen Sampson. I'm the uh, chef and GM at the Beaver Kill Valley Inn. This is my fourth season in the Catskills. I hate to say that uh, I have not been out on a drift before. Now I want to experience what our guests do. That's why they're here. You know, I, I want to be able to get that experience for myself. You really get to see the ecosystem. You get to see the flow of the water, understand where the fish are. You know, this is all going to be new for me, and I'm relying on the guides totally to see if I can catch some fish. We're going to have a little snack. Yesterday we put this together, so it's real easy. As you can see, it's a Tupperware and a Ziploc bag. We're eating smoked trout salad in the rain, thanks to Sherry, our new friend from the trout farm. Cheers. We're surrounded by pools filled with trout. Sherry's great-grandfather found that raising trout was a little more in his style. Sherry has been here since she was a little kid and now she runs the place. We're at the Beaver Kill Trout Hatchery today and we are talking about the whole process of going from egg to plate. This is a great American story. I'm Sherry Shaver, fourth generation trout farmer. Um, <clears throat> my family has owned and operated the Beaver Kill Trout Hatchery since 1963. We are primarily, our business is live haul, live delivery to private fishing clubs from Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and all the way up into the Adirondacks, as well as all the Beaver Kill River. These people have a very sustainable program here. They're pulling water off the river and returning it to the source. Sometimes a trout slips in and it's okay. Uh, they deal with bears and weasels and muskrats. And, and eagles, eagles and ospreys and blue herons and mink and otter. We're in the wild, folks, <laughs> and uh, the American Rivers Tour is glad to bring this story to you. So let's go over that real quickly. When a chef contacts you directly, how does it, how, how does it go down? In other words, is he specifically looking for certain sizes? Yes, usually uh, 12 inch trout. We do 12 inch rainbow trout, either dressed or deboned. Okay. But we will do any size trout anybody wants. So a guy, if he had a, a, a banquet and he wanted to have a 20 inch trout, you could Absolutely. accommodate that and you do that by hand? You, you, you dress the, the fish by hand? Yes, no machines. No machines. No machines. Great, and it goes right on ice and then gets shipped out to that operator. Right. The great grandfather came here and, and, and cut this out? No, he actually was a farmer. Oh, okay. Dairy farmer back in the 60s. He was working for a fishing club and they wanted to see if he could raise trout to stock their stream. So he started playing around and started raising trout and it just took off from there. It was quite evident that this was going to be something we need to pursue. Yeah. So then my grandfather and father took an interest and started building and everything here they built. That's all, and you maintain. Then we've added to and maintained. That's key. These are rainbow trout. They were hatched out in January. Uh, they should be making a debut on the plate um, probably by next June. This is a very physical, intensive job. Mm. Lifting trout. I mean, they lift. L l and they're moving. They're moving. The, the, we're moving the all the time. The trout are flopping around. Yeah, they're going to be netted so that you can see them oh, great. braid fish down here. That's fantastic. This is, look at that. And yeah. you just focus on browns and, and rainbow. And brook trout. And brook. Yeah. Okay. And brook trout aren't real fast growers either. No. They're kind of a little bit faster than the brown, but not very much. Rainbows are your the fastest growers mm -hmm. and the golden rainbows. Mm -hmm. These are the big guys. And and so you're keeping these guys here because they're 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 protected from the bears. Yes. And we keep an electric fence on. These are our orders that are going out tomorrow. 
they're making notes on on how big the fish are. Or? Uh, they're they're grading. Okay. And there's a guy on shore with a clipboard keeping track. For one order, we need 200 tens, and then for the other order, we need 225 tens, 12s, 13s, and 14s. Certain numbers. Mixed. Right. So he's keeping track of how many fish they are grading. And they're all rainbows. Yes. And he has the counter when there's three of us in there yelling numbers. Well, 13, 14. So right. He's got to be on his toes. He's screw up, you know. He, he, it's money. Money's money. Yeah, fish is money. Every fish has got a, a right. dollar value. That's the thing we handle thousands to get the number that we need. So this is a, a 200 fish order? No, altogether. Um, the one is like 300 and the other one is gonna be probably like 500. 500 rainbow going to a trout club somewhere in America. Oh. It's gonna fill a river and it's gonna be fish for a derby. Four generations of shavers have five. been. Five. Five generations. Two of the boys that are in your pictures are five, fifth generation. The counter? Uh, the counter and one of the guys in the pond. The counter and one of the guys in the pond, fifth generation shavers supplying trout to America. Galen's trout recipe is very simple. If you organize it ahead of time, literally it took us longer to start the fire than cook this dish. Today we're going to be showing you a dish that's one of our specialties. We serve every Saturday night to the Wolf School. It's a cast iron roasted rainbow trout topped with sautéed leeks, shiitake mushrooms, and sauced with an oven dried red grape compote. It's going to be real easy to prepare before you go out to the river and delicious when you get your first trout and cook it right on the river. We didn't put any oil in this pan. This pan is well cured. Nothing's going to stick to it. We're going to let this fish roast until you see it starting to turn translucent about a third of the way and then we're going to add our sides to the pot pan and warm those up gently in this trout. So we're going to start adding our sides. Got a little Ziploc baggie of the fingerling potatoes that we roasted up yesterday. We're going to add those. Okay, next thing we have, a little Ziploc baggie of those beautiful shiitake mushrooms with leeks and shallots that we prepared yesterday. It has a little white wine in there. I'm going to add that to the other side. And that's going to warm up really nicely. So the last thing, we're pretty much halfway cooked on this trout. So what we're going to do is flip it. Don't worry if the head dislodges, which it will and did. Try to get under the main portion of the fish and then just flip it over. And you can see it's got that nice, crispy, crusty skin. At this point, we're almost there, almost home free. We're gonna add those grapes that we roasted yesterday. And you can see nothing, this cannot be any easier. We brought three Ziploc baggies and a trout and you're gonna have delicious dinner right here on the Beaver Kill River. We've been cooking for about nine minutes and Chef Galen Sampson from the Beaver Kill Inn is already preparing a meal. He's serving a meal riverside in the Catskill Mountains on the Beaver Kill River. If you get a chance to go out fishing for trout, enjoy your time on the river, return the trout to the resource and get to know a hatchery owner or a fishmonger in your neighborhood and buy this trout from a responsible source so that you can enjoy trout without killing the resource. This is a trip to remember. The New York Catskill experience is going to be long in my memory. So thank you for joining me on the American Rivers Tour. I hope you come back and join us again sometime.